friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a bit of a repot and chat video. I got several different types of self-watering pots from Amazon and I wanted to kind of put them to the test and so I figured I may as well start out by putting everything in them so I can see which ones I like and which ones I don't like over time. But while I do that, I asked over on Instagram for you all to send me some questions in. And so you have, and I'm going to be answering those while I put some stuff into some self-watering pots. How's that sound? It better be good because it's what's happening. If you're new here and you don't know me already, my name is Emma and I make houseplanty content all over the internet. So if you want to follow along with my houseplanty journey and learn something along the way, stick around, watch some more of my videos and subscribe to my channel. Right, let's, let's get potting. I'm gonna switch the angle slightly so you can see what I'm doing in addition to my beautiful face. Ding. <laughs> um, and let's get started. So I've got five different self-watering pots I'm gonna test out over the next few months to see if I like. I got all of these on Amazon and I will be linking them down below in the description. This isn't sponsored by them. I just am always on the lookout for a good self-watering pot. I find them really, really useful when putting things in pond or semi-hydro. So I always want more and cheap alternatives because the Lechuza ones, Oh my goodness, they're so freaking expensive for like one pot. It's like 20, 30, 50 pounds. And I'm like, I can't afford to kit out my whole collection in that. So I'm looking for some like good, cheaper alternatives. Sorry if the light's going in and out. The sun is going in and out behind clouds. Yay, autumn. But yeah, so I got all of these and I'm going to be putting some plants in them today. So I think I will start with this one because it goes well with one of the first questions. So, the first question, let's just drop those all over the floor. <laughs> the first question was, can you explain how self-watering works and why it's a good alternative for some? So, I think self-watering is like actually really good if you're using semi-hydro because you don't end up with plants that look like this. As you can see, my fry deck is a bit unhappy at the moment. It's got some sad leaves here. And that's because I have forgotten to refill the water reservoir. So I've got a kind of makeshift self-watering pot here. And actually for all of these ones, pretty much, they're in a sort of makeshift. And I just use a normal nursery pot with holes in the bottom and a cash pot and I fill the water up to like, you can kind of see the line where I fill the water up to. And so it's still sitting in a puddle of water, but because it's pond or semi-hydro, that's okay because the, there's enough air for like in between the little minerals to give the roots some aeration while not like suffocating them with like too much water. But I really like self-watering pots that have a sort of indicator on it. This one in particular has a little, raindrop cut out and when it's full this little thing floats to the top and it goes blue oh that's really far away and then as it drains the water like the blue goes away and you can tell that it needs more water which i think is really really useful because when they're like this i can't tell without picking them up like every day whether or not they need more water so although this works and is fine, you just need to pay a little bit more attention to this rather than in this where you can just very easily look kind of from afar even and see whether or not it needs more water. Let me get the bottom of the pot. And like even still, so I watered this one yesterday because I noticed it was like really, really droopy. And I put a decent amount in and it's already dried out. So that obviously means it was thirsty and it's still a bit saggy and floppy today. So it just shows that I need to be a bit more on top of it, which I'm not the most on top of it, am I? So 
I'm gonna put this fry deck in this pot. It's a little bit bigger as well, which I think will benefit it. This one does have some pretty massive leaves. I mean, this one just looks massive because it's close to the camera, but they are quite large. And so I think it would benefit from a slightly bigger pot as well. And I'm also gonna read around for some corms because who doesn't want corms? Carrying on with the question about self-watering, I think, or I find them to be a, oh yeah, that's gorgeous. Oh my God, look at those roots. Do you freaking see those? They're stunning. Oh my God, I love this plant so much. And it's obviously really loving the Semi Hydro Life. Sorry, let me just get some of this pawn away before I can answer the rest of the question. So here's a good example of when I used some onion packaging mesh to put in the bottom of the pot so I could put pawn in. It just saves the pawn coming up the bottom of the nursery pot. But now it's kind of a pain because I kind of want to untangle it, which isn't the best thing for the roots, but it will be okay. I could just let them continue growing through it, but I feel like it's one of those things like, you know, when you get a plant and it's got that like mesh around it and cause it's like a plug plant. I don't want this to become that. If this wants to grow bigger, I don't want to stop it from doing that by keeping the mesh in there. So I'm going to try to take it out. It might take a minute, um, but I will try. I also find self-watering pots a lot easier because they, like, I don't have to be on top of watering constantly. Um, I'm able to kind of fill up a reservoir and let it set sit for a little while and not have to worry about overwatering, which is like a massive cause of issues in plants. Overwatering is probably one of the leading cause of plant deaths through root rot and rhizome rot, corn rot, bulb rot, all the different types of rot. So it's like best to avoid it at all costs and using something like self-watering is good for that. I personally haven't used self-watering with um, soil as I'm not like super familiar with that, but I find that with pond it is absolutely freaking perfect because it just does exactly what you want it to do. Create a nice reservoir for the plant. Another question is what is my number one wish list plant right now? Oh my goodness, that is a hard one. So I've actually recently acquired um, what has been my number one wishlist plant. It was my um, Anthurian Warquianum. Like I had literally wanted that plant for years before I got it at the Rare House Plant Festival. So I had like, it was kind of just like always the number one wishlist plant I had on my list. But now that I have it, I'm like, what's next? <laughs> um, I'm probably gonna try and wait a little bit before I like get any more wishlist plants. I do need to get a couple after my wishlist plant video, which I'm really excited about. So I will be getting some from that, but I think my number one, probably a philodendron El Chaco Red um, or a Ruber Juvenile. They are absolutely gorgeous. I almost got one at the Rare House Plant Festival as well, but I was trying to stick to a budget, which I luckily was able to. I had a budget of 200 pounds and I spent 197. <laughs> so I'm pretty proud of myself for that um, because I was very tempted to get an El Choco Red. They are absolutely stunning plants and like they would make a great addition to anyone's collection. But I think that's my number one plant at the minute because I've also gotten, what other wishlist plants have I gotten recently? I got an Alocasia Melo recently, um, like a couple months back, and it's doing really well. I'm about to get a Syngonium Three Kings. Um, someone I know, one of my patrons actually is 
um, very kindly offered to send me one as like a belated birthday present, which is so sweet of her. Um, and I'm like super excited about it. Um, what else? Oh, I don't know. I feel like I've just been, I've been getting quite a lot recently, which has been really fun. But at the same time, I'm also trying to not buy plants, so. <laughs> it's hard, it's so very hard. I'm kind of going off of that at the same time. The question is, do you try and limit how much you spend, um, a, I think they mean a month, or just see if you can afford something at the time? Um, I think I am quite lucky in that technically buying houseplants is a business expense for me because this is my full-time job. Um, and so I don't spend my personal money on it. I guess all of good growing money is my personal money because I am a sole trader um, slash self-employed. But like, uh, they are a little bit separate. So I do have savings from good growing that I can almost always spend on plants. I try to not do it too much. I don't set myself specific like limits usually, except for when I'm going to like the Rare House Plant Festival and I was like, okay, I can spend 200 pounds. Um, that's kind of more usual for me. I don't really go out to plant shops that often because I know I'm very tempted to buy plants. And also because I've gotten more into like rarer plants, they're less likely to be in just like average plant shops. So I don't really, I kind of set myself a budget and I kind of don't at the same time. It's kind of complicated. <laughs> Does that make any sense? Um, if there's something that I really, really, really want, I will usually buy it because I want it. But it has to be something that I'm like really, really, really in love with. And I feel like that doesn't happen every day. So yeah, and especially if I'm buying online, I have a little bit more self-control sometimes. Like if I'm already putting in an order, I have no self-control because it's like, it's already happening. I may as well spend more money. Um, or like, let me try and get to the free shipping or whatever. Um, but if, if I'm not putting in an order already, I'm a lot less likely to just like go and buy plants because hitting the like add to cart and check out buttons doesn't deter me from doing it, but it makes it like I have to actually confirm that it's what I want to do. Sometimes I have to have Joe like talk me out of it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I, have an, I have an idea of how much I could spend at any given time, but I try to not if at all possible. Because I am trying to be a business of myself. Um, okay, got that out. Um, I did tear some of the roots off, unfortunately, but they should be fine. There's still tons of roots in here, so I'm like not worried about it. Look at those roots, yay. So I'm just going to put some pond in the bottom of this pot and plant this inside of it. Also, I haven't seen any corms, so I guess I don't have any, which is fine, I guess. I found corms don't grow as much in pollen as they do in soil. Has anybody else found that? Like, I still get branches off that come and stick up, but they're not like corms. They're like kind of off of rhizomes from the original plant. I don't know if that's just me, <laughs> but it's what happens. So I can't really talk while I'm doing this because it's so freaking loud that the audio gets all messed up and sounds weird, so. So that was in um, Lechuza Pond, but I'm going to be adding more semi-hydro mix from Soil Ninja. This is the fine mix which is a newer mix for them. They only just came out with it, I think, in the last month or two. And I really, really like it. It's similar in size to the Lechuza Pond, I think maybe a tiny bit finer, but I, I tend to like that a little bit better than the chunky stuff. I know other people like the chunky stuff and that's perfectly fine, but, but it's just personal preference, isn't it?
So there we go. It's looking pretty good. I can rotate this around to be wherever I want. I did put a chopstick on this one because it had a bit of a dent where it had fallen over, but I think it's looking really good. I'm going to fill it up and we can move on to the next one. So next up I have this pot. It is a self-watering pot that comes with a bit of a cotton string that you put through some holes in the bottom and you have water in the bottom. You can put it in through this little gap here, that, and the cotton will wick the water up into the bottom of the pot, which I think is a decent method. It's the same method as this plant is currently in now. So this is my begonia um, and I feel like it needs something a little bit bigger to expand a little bit. So this one is a good step up. And I do like this system. I think it works pretty well for a lot of plants, including this one. This one's been perfectly fine in it. Um, normally I'm not very good at begonias, but having this one like this has been perfectly fine. And I've been basically neglecting it and only filling it when the water's nearly run out and it's been absolutely fine. So that's what I'm going to do here. So the only problem I foresee about this pot is that the holes are quite large, especially for pond. I feel like they'd probably be fine for soil, but because pond and semi-hydro is so fine, especially the fine um, soil ninja mix, I might need to do something slightly interesting to make this work. You know what? So I think I'm actually going to use this mesh, um, the garlic mesh, and put it in the bottom just so the pawn doesn't go through. I'm going to rip a couple tiny holes, which seems counterintuitive, but I want the string to be able to go up above the mesh. So I'm going to put the string through here, through these holes, like that, and then feed those through to the bottom and then the mesh will just sit on the bottom. So I'm not sure how well you can see in there, but I've just put the mesh on the bottom and the cord goes through the mesh. And that should be perfectly fine. And it'll still work to wick up the water, which is what we want. I feel like pond repots don't work as well with answering questions because it's a bit louder. So maybe this wasn't the best choice for a repot and chat, but here we are, we're gonna make it happen because we've already started. The next questions kind of go together is how's life as a full-time youtuber and are you finding it hard to keep a daily routine now that I quit my job some time ago so for those of you who are new here hi I'm Emma I'm a full-time youtuber um, which I absolutely freaking love I love this job so much I am really 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 enjoying it it's like I feel like I'm living my dream which is like all I could ever ask for. I absolutely love doing YouTube. I think it is so much fun and I get to like live my passion every day, which is making videos, teaching, education, and like plants and all of that. So I just get to like bring you along with me on my journey and that makes me like beyond happy which is pretty crazy where's my i feel like i'm losing all my stuff it's right here <laughs> oh so like it's honestly it makes me so happy to be able to do this and when it comes to the daily routine 
At the beginning, it was quite a lot harder to kind of get into a daily routine. I wasn't used to it. I was used to going to a, the same job every day, doing the same thing, um, like being told what to do, having no sort of autonomy about my schedule, like zero flexibility whatsoever. And so now going into this where I have like 100% flexibility, I am in charge of making sure that I get what needs to happen done. I am in charge of creating my own schedule. It is like an absolute blessing, but it's also somewhat difficult. It's not just like a walk in the park. I've found myself needing to like set boundaries in different ways for myself about like what I can do with friends and giving myself the time to work on my YouTube stuff and not just saying, because I'm flexible, I can do anytime, any when. Um, so kind of creating those boundaries for myself has been super important. And it's not just like, hey, I can hang out with you any day, any time. I try and film on these specific days. So like, if we can go around that, that would be great. Or sorry, I've got meetings this day. I mean, I would never book something around a meeting. If I had a meeting, I would never just like go hang out with my friend instead. Um, <laughs> But like just trying to figure out that sort of balance is really important. I'm also gonna continue keeping this stake in here cause this one needs a bit of support. But yeah, I find it great. I'm really loving it, but kind of getting into the daily routine is a little bit harder. And I think I am learning. I've kind of gone into somewhat of a routine with myself, like a weekly routine. I am trying to like film content on Mondays and Wednesdays because Joe is at the office on those days. And so it kind of gives me a free house to like film as I need. And I don't have to worry about like him talking or him being in calls or him coming into the kitchen or me saying like, hey, you have to stay out of this room all day long, um, which, like I can imagine being quite annoying for him. So it is, it is good for me to film when he's out. Not saying I can't, I filmed for the past like two or three years while he was in. So I can, it's just easier when he's not. So I think it is good to have that. And then I use like the rest of the week to do admin, to edit, to plan um work on other projects like the plant swap that's coming up which i'm really excited about um i can't believe how fast tickets sold out for that like all in all they sold out in like 36 and a half hours we had two different releases and it took that long to sell all of the tickets which is absolutely mental seeing as we didn't even sell out in our first one and we had half as many tickets almost so it's just like, it's just mental um, and I'm really excited about it. But yeah, I'm, I'm really, 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 really loving being able to do this. And I am not quite making as much money as before. I'm still like working on getting that higher, but I know it'll come in time and I just need to be patient and keep putting out content. And I've been absolutely loving putting out three videos a week. Like I feel like I'm, for the longest time I've had so many ideas and like, oh, I wanna do this, that, and the other. And now I actually get the chance to do those things, which before I couldn't. And so I feel like I'm making content like as fast as my brain is coming up with ideas now, or if that makes sense. So yeah, absolutely freaking loving it. There we go. I mean, it's not perfect. Oh yeah, I can fit more in there. There we go. Hopefully this will like its new pot. I think it definitely will. I think having the clear reservoir at the bottom is actually quite nice because I can much easier see it than when it was in this black one. Though it is clear and though you can technically see it, it's not like a first glance kind of thing. Whereas this will be much more of a first glance. I can see if it needs water sort of thing. So first impressions, this one is nice and I do like it so far.
I mean, just off of the basic first impressions. Also, this one came in a pack of three, so it is slightly cheaper, which is awesome. The raindrop one just comes as a single and it was the most expensive pot I bought. So this next one is actually just one of these pots, but I've done a little bit of jigging beforehand to see if I can attach a moss pull to it. So one of the most annoying things for me about moss pulls is when they're not connected to the pot. So I can't just like lift it out with the moss pull. And so I have actually like made holes in the pot and in the pole and zip tied them together. So now it's just all one and it fits really well, which is awesome because I was worried that it wasn't gonna work out, but it has, does this fit? How does this fit? There we go, like that. And on this one, I'm going to be putting my, ooh, dripping, um, <laughs> my Skin Dapses Silver Lady. It's just been in my new like sort of pawn sort of box and it has gorgeous roots on it that I think would definitely benefit from a pole. So I'm going to put it on here with a pole. This is another one with a cotton rope system and it has a clear window. So you can see the water level from there. It's not my favorite type because Again, it's harder to see at like a first glance whether or not it's got what it needs, but it should be fine. Um, and this one, because the holes are quite small, I'm not gonna put mesh in, but I am gonna use a bit of the chunkier Soil Ninja stuff just to line the bottom so less will fall through. So I've just put a layer on the bottom there and I'm gonna fill the rest up with like the normal Soil Ninja Semi Hydro. By normal, I mean the fine stuff. Um. Oh yeah, look at these roots. So the next question is, is it in the sort of five year plan to start a plan shop? Like, is that one of my goals? And honestly, the answer is no. Um, I don't really feel like I want to start a plant shop. Um, selling isn't really my thing. I feel like really uncomfortable about it. And like, I, I'm fine selling small stuff as like a private collector sort of thing but on like the mass scale, selling just is not my cup of tea. I don't wanna own a shop or anything like that, which like props to people who can, because I think it takes a lot of really hard work to be able to do something like that. But it's just not work that I fancy putting in. I much prefer being an educator and an entertainer and like making videos for the internet. Um, that's sort of my, more my calling. Uh, I don't really like marketing and stuff like that, which I know I do need to do for myself anyway for this job, but it just feels a little bit easier marketing myself rather than trying to like market plants. So no, I don't think that's in my five year plan. My five year plan is to continue doing what I'm doing now, but hopefully be making slightly more money so I can afford to live. <laughs> Not that I can't afford to live, but Joe's helping me quite a lot right now, which I really appreciate. And I'm very, very lucky to be in a situation where he can help me and that he's willing to help me. I think that is like one of the loveliest things he's ever done is being willing to support me in this kind of dream endeavor of mine. Um, but he, he really sees how much I like this and how much hard work I put into it because I'm working as long as he's working in the day. Like if not more, sometimes the hours are different, but it, it ends up being about the same. I'm literally working at this as my full-time job and like he appreciates how much I'm putting into it. And so he knows that it's not gonna be forever that I'm not able to fully support myself, but 
um, just for the time being. He's being very generous and helping me with that, which is awesome. So thanks, Joe. Ooh, this is a good one for right now. Do you water your plants less with a real moss pole? So like this is a real moss pole as opposed to a cocoa coir pole. Um, I think I water the soil less. I very rarely will water just the soil of my plants that have moss poles on them because they are mostly getting water through the moss. And when I water the moss poles, I'm doing so so thoroughly that the soil ends up getting moist as well. So I don't really need to like specifically water the the soil. But that being said, I do water the moss poles more often than I would soil because they dry out a whole heck of a lot quicker. Like this was damp moss yesterday and now it's definitely ready for a water again. So it is a balance, but I try to not water the with so much force that it goes into the soil every time that I give my moss pool water. Does that make any sense? I feel like it might not, <laughs> but it, so yes and no. I water the moss more, I water the soil, not at all. <laughs> Yes, that is so cute. And I can just kind of pull it out with just the moss pole, which is awesome. So I'm gonna fill this one up with water and move on to the next one. I think this is really gonna like this pole. Hopefully it doesn't grow too quickly, but look how big that freaking leaf is compared to the tiny, tiny, tiny ones that it came with. The newest leaf is a bit smaller, but I think it's because it didn't have support. So hopefully now that I've put it on support, it will continue growing nice big leaves. I'll probably have to put this in the cabinet as well because I don't really have many other places that moss poles like stay super moist. And this is used to being in like a highly humid box. So I might need to graduate it to the Ikea cabinet, then graduate it from the Ikea cabinet to like outside. That probably would be perfectly fine because I feel like skin dapses are really hardy. So maybe I'll just skip that and go straight to outside in my home. Should I? Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna be brave. It'll be fine. I just need to make sure that I keep the pole nice and moist and it'll be perfectly happy. So the next self-watering pot I have also came in a set. It came in a set of four, I believe. And again, it wasn't too, too expensive, but these ones, they have um, little indicators on them, which I personally find to be the easiest option. I really like when you can have an indicator because it shows you exactly how much water is on it at like a very, very short glance, which I find super duper useful. But I just need to put this indicator in through the bottom plate of this pot and then put the little floaty ball in and then put the cap back on. So then this goes in the bottom of the pot fairly tightly. It's not like secure, but no sort of pawn can get around the outside, I suppose you're probably supposed to go straight in with soil on this, but I don't like using soil and self-watering. Not that I've done it, I've not tried it, but I, it scares me, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> oh, I like this one. Um, if there was a fire, what plant would I save? If I could only save one plant, it probably would be my Anthurium moroquianum, just because I've wanted it for so long that I'm just really happy that I have it now, but oh, that is such a tough question. Um, I mean, obviously I want to save all of them, but I think it would be the Anthurium. Yeah. So I'm going to be putting my Alocasia Green Dragon Dragon Scale, that's what it's called. Um, and it was just in one of my makeshift self-watering -water systems with a nursery pot and a cash pot with water reservoir. 
and I'm going to be putting that in here. I've never used a pot quite like this one before where it only had the bottom on it. So it does make me a little bit nervous. Like not so much that I'm not gonna use it. But just that I don't wanna like do it wrong. <laughs> The next question is, what will you be taking to the plant swap? Ooh, it just got really dark. The sun like proper went away. Um, <laughs> what will I be taking to the plant swap? That is a really good question. Um, I have a lot of things in my prop box at the minute. Um, definitely some white princess cuttings because I have about a bajillion and a half of those. I'll probably take some Hoya cuttings because I have lots of Hoyas right now that are quite long that I could cut a good chunk off of. Some Epibrim and Kujang because I've got a ton of those. Cebu Blue because I have a thousand and a half Cebu Blue cuttings um, and I know they're quite a popular plant. I mean, I freaking love them, but I have too many at this point. Um, I have a couple alocasia bulbs that are like repeats of plants that I have that I can bring. Um, other than that, I don't know. I'm like kind of a last minute person when it comes to that kind of thing. I'll just like go around on the day and think like, oh, I could get rid of this, I could get rid of that. Like maybe this, I'll take a cutting here, cutting there. I'll bring some rough feet of or tetrasperma because mine's freaking huge and like outgrowing its pole already because it grows like a freaking madman. Um, not that madmen grow quickly, but um, yeah, no. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna see. Things might change. I might not bring some of those if I end up doing a little bit of a plant sale before then, or I'm more likely so gonna bring more because um, why not? Who doesn't want more? There we go. Okay, I really actually like this. I was a bit worried that the like plate at the bottom wouldn't work well, but I think it does. And so I'm just gonna put some water in here and this one will go back in the cabinet when it's done. So, yeah. I have one more. And it is this pot here. So this was one that I found because I thought it'd be quite interesting. It is a self-watering planter, but it has a flat back and a hole so I could use it to like hang something on the wall and it wouldn't stick out too weird. So I was thinking about what would work well in that. And I think I'm going to put my Maranta silver band because I've got all my other Marantas in Pawn at the minute and so why not put this one as well because I like having my Marantas in Pawn and they seem to like it as well. So yeah, I think that'll work. I think it'll be fine. Um, but this is another one that has the sort of cotton string that I just have to feed through the holes in the bottom of the pot like so. And again, the holes are like decently sized, but I think I can get away with just using some of the bigger pawn at the bottom instead of putting the mesh around it. So this is one of the only ones that doesn't have any sort of indicator or anything. But I thought it was interesting because it does have the like flat back feature. So it might be slightly more annoying to check on, but we will see. It'll take some trial and error and I will like give you an update on all of these plants and pots in a future video, kind of sharing like my favorites, which ones that worked, which ones I didn't like as much, pros and cons of all of them. So yeah, if that's something you wanna see, do let me know, cause I can do that. Put the little water emoji drops um, down below in the comments if you are interested in watching that for me, cause I think 
I would have wanted it and I haven't really seen many on the internet so that's why I'm making it happen <laughs> so this one is actually in soil at the minute so I'm going to have to take it out of the soil and rinse off the roots but while I am taking it out of the soil I'm gonna answer a question someone asked what's one of the most fun days I've had so I actually just had a really, really, really fun day um, going to a trance music festival with Claire the Jungle Haven. I haven't been to like a music festival in so, so long, but um, Claire invited me to go along with her and some friends to one, like actually this past weekend, maybe two weekends from now if I put this video out later. But it was so much fun. I like forgot how much I love just like being silly and dancing. I am a very bad dancer. Um, I mostly just flail and jump. Um, like I wouldn't say that I have rhythm or that I'm good at it in any way. But I just really, really love just dancing around and having a good time and listening to some really good music and hanging out with Claire because she's absolutely brilliant and her friends were super sweet as well and like welcomed me and were so nice so it was like a really really good time and I really want to go to more again in the future because I, I legitimately haven't gone to a music festival in like at least eight or nine years maybe a decade which is crazy um I'm 27 and I think the last one I went to was when I was 18 <laughs> Music's just not really been a priority for me um, throughout my life and like I'd rather spend my money on plants than like expensive concert tickets but I really enjoy spending my money on expensive concert tickets this time so I think I might do more in the future and so yeah that was really really fun I really enjoyed it so how to best acclimate plants that are coming out of the prop box and potting them up I <laughs> I'm personally still working on that myself. I I tend to leave my cuttings in my prop box for much longer than they need to. If you watched my prop box like tour video, you'll see how many of my plants I just like let to root for absolutely ages without potting them up. And so after that I did end up potting a bunch up. And from there, it really depends on what substrate you're using. If you're putting them into soil, the best thing to do is keep them moist for a little bit while they're like getting used to the new substrate. They might go into a bit of shock because they have like undergone the trauma of changing substrate and like you've probably been touching their roots and moving them around and they're probably in a new climate. But yeah, I think just knowing that they might go into a bit of shock is important and just managing that by keeping them in a humid place at the beginning and slowly lowering their humidity maybe open your prop box for a couple of hours every day to like get the plants used to slightly lower if you have if you can open the prop box but keeping the substrate moist but not like soaking is also really important I tend to put a lot of things straight from the prop box into my cabinet because it's a good like intermediary and I think my plants really like that but not everyone has a greenhouse cabinet which I understand so it's it's good to just try and keep them humid for a little while and um, maybe group them together with other plants put them on a pebble tray um, put them near a humidifier something like that to just boost their humidity and make sure that they are staying like moist that's probably my best advice but I'm I'm a procrastinator about it as well so <laughs> so I'm a bit nervous because I was hoping there'd be a little bit more rootage than this on them they're not huge like that does look a little bit overwhelming they'll be fine they'll be they'll be fine I'm going to rinse these roots off 
with some warm water and try to get as much substrate off as I can and then I'll be back to put them in this pot. So that is it. That is the end of me repotting all of these self-watering pots that I'm testing out and answering your questions from Instagram. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up down below and don't forget to leave a comment, the little water droplets, if you want to hear what I think of these self-watering pots a little bit further down the line and some other ones as well. And comment anything else that you'd like me to talk about in the future and subscribe for more. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.